everyone. Today is Thursday, March 24th, and thank you so much for joining in to our weekly PPACA webinars. Uh, just with a little bit of uh, hands up, if you could just let me know if you can see my screen. I always like to check on that because there's been way too many times that you couldn't see my screen. Excellent. I see hands going up all over the place. Awesome. So let's get right into the agenda. Um, you know, it, it looks like more more information than I really actually have to share today, um, but uh, we can certainly discuss it. Last chance for UPMC on the under 65 side uh, individual is March 31st, and that's for a 4-1 effective date. Of course, 5-1 effective dates and beyond are not paying compensation, so um, the UPMC you can write. However, they have made a change on how you enroll UPMC. So what they said is as of March 7th, um, enrollments will not be done through the UPMC Marketplace Individual Quoting System that's on their producer hotline or producer um, online tools. You can still shop for plans, uh, but you cannot enroll. If you want to enroll a UPMC plan on exchange, you go directly to healthcare.gov or you can call their producer assistance hotline and they can help you do the uh, marketplace enrollment uh, for the qualifying event during the SEP uh, uh, segment. Um, or off exchange, you can call the producer assistance line and that information is going to be in my newsletter. If you're interested in those two numbers, the producer assistance line for um, on marketplace and off marketplace is actually the same. Um, if you want that, I can give that to you. Just shoot me an email and um, I will provide that. Um, of course, IBX, Independence Blue Cross in the five county Philly area has not um, done away with their compensation. So as of the 31st, they will be the last man standing if you want to write individual insurance in Pennsylvania and receive a compensation. Um, some people have asked for CB Capital Blue Cross store uh, information and their telephone numbers, and they have three. They have one on Elmerton Avenue here in Harrisburg. They have one in Enola, and then they have one in the Saucon Valley, uh, the promenade shops at Saucon Valley. They each have their own number, uh, certainly their own location, and if you're interested in those numbers as well and the addresses, let us know or let me know and I'll send you that information as well. I mean, clearly this is if you have a client that calls you and you're not going to be assisting them, then um, you can certainly send them that way. Commissions, the third bullet point. Boy, oh boy, this is, opens up a can of worms. So we all know that every carrier on this nation um, or in this nation has decided that they're delaying compensation. So we did get our first batch of Cat Blue Cross commissions in. They're going to be released on the 31st as is our standard commission ske uh, payment schedule. Um, and if you recall, they were taking Cat Blue Cross was taking a, a snapshot as of 2-9 and then paying the compensation based on an estimate and then they're going to fix and add um, for the compensation fee that we get in April. Um, there's other issues where some, some other general agencies are getting statuses and commissions on cases that you wrote through us. So they recognize that issue um, a couple weeks ago and are working through that. But I'm just telling you again, if you have commission issues, and I'm sure we're all going to have issues, um, you can go to our website. There is an inquiry on our website where you can actually uh, ask the question to Brandy Coleman, our Director of Commissions, and it's assigned a ticket number and the task and it's followed up on. Um, so if you do have commission issues, I would encourage you to go through that system on our website um, because that's going to um, give you the paper trail um, for all the commission issues that are coming in. So many of you have asked what 2017 will look like on the individual side. Um, you know, I'm it's still early, but I am reaching out to the carriers to see what their intentions are for open enrollment starting 11-1 um, for 2017 enrollment. And so far, again, it's very early. Um, 
Capital and Highmark are planning on at least filing for commissions. <laughs> I couldn't even say paying commissions because it just wouldn't come out. Um, so I do feel pretty confident that commissions will be paid for open enrollment for 2017. What those commissions will be, what the plan choices will be, um, I really don't know. But um, you know, I, I do feel comfortable saying that we probably will get paid for open enrollment individual business for 17. Um, obviously, we're watching this very closely, and as soon as I know anything, I will pass that information on to you. Um, PEHU, Day on the Hill, Pennsylvania Association of Health Underwriters is having their annual Day on the Hill. They're actually having a precursor uh, prep uh, meeting on April 4th at the Hollywood Casino, and then the 5th is the actual Day on the Hill where Many people from all over the state of Pennsylvania, PEHU members, go to our state capitol and talk to our legislators about what is important to us, commissions, um, you know, the, the plan designs, you know, all the, the, the pain points that we've been experiencing. Um, it is a good day. You're never left alone to talk to um, a representative on your own. You're always in a group. So if you have any interest in um, you know, really walking the walk and and making a difference, hopefully, um, then I would encourage you to look into attending on the 5th. It's absolutely free. It's, it's a great day to, to get involved. So if you have any questions, let me know. I will pass that information on to you as well. We are having a Self-Funding 101 webinar April 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, that invitation is going to go out very soon if it's not done so already, so watch for that. I do think self-funding for all groups is going to be at least a hot button that groups are going to start looking at, um, especially those grandmothered groups that have held on to their non-PPACA plans. The sticker shock alone of moving to a PPACA option um, you know, will certainly require that we look outside the box. And for smaller groups, self-funding can be a bit risky. Um, but it is looking outside the box, and I'm sure you're at least wanna, going to want to be familiar with, um, you know, the, the programs at a high level. Uh, so you can talk to your groups and, and probably get more uh, customers just because of it. So watch for that invitation. I think it's uh, well worth attending. Uh, the PPACA law turned six yesterday. I can hardly believe it, but March 23rd, 2010 is when the law was signed into effect, and uh, life has not been the same since for many of us, but I didn't want it to go unnoticed that, you know, six years ago, believe it or not, is when this law was passed. Um, seems like yesterday, and quite frankly, even at six years old, there's a lot of kinks that still have to be worked out. Um, quite interesting. Um, anyway, so happy birthday to Pipaca. Hopefully a lot of a black candles. <laughs> um, I did include on the handouts the marketplace appeal form. I had that in my webinar last week and I wanted to attach it again because if you know if if an employee if you have an employer plan and an employee is getting a subsidy, that's gonna be um, you know caught this year. So the IRS will be sending out um, a notice to the employers if an employee is matched to you, to your, your group customers, and they are receiving a subsidy. The marketplace appeal form is for the employer to complete to prove that the employer has provided uh, minimum essential coverage, minimum value coverage, affordable coverage, etc. So that may be uh, very important to you in the coming months. And uh, that's it. That brings us up to our open forum. And let's see what type of questions we have or comments. Oh, not many. Uh, Nancy says, if we write an individual plan during SEP and the individual, oh, just got another one, and the individual remains in the same plan in 2017, will the carriers pay for the commissions in 17, or do they need to be enrolled in a different plan for the agent to be paid? Um, well, Nancy, they, there's a lot of variables in that question. Um, every The individual market, it all run on a calendar year basis, of course. So the plan will reset as of 1-1. What those plans will be, I don't know. Let's just assume that you have a Capital Blue Cross person in 
uh, I don't know, a value HMO plan that's going to be offered in 2017. If that consumer re-enrolls or renews on that same plan, a soft renewal if you will, then you will receive compensation. At least that's what they're saying. But keep in mind, that's what Highmark said last year, and they terminated most of their plans, if not all of their plans, and um, had other offerings. So, you know, it, again, it's, it's, it's all up to what's going to be filed. But if they remain on the same plan, do a soft renewal, then yes, what they're telling me, and well, all of us, is that we will start to pick up commissions as of 1-1 on that client. Um, Bill says, the appeal center will reject the appeal automatically if the appeal is filed more than 90 days after the application date. Most issues arise after 90 days, so you or the client when will then have to file a response to the denial letter as to why the appeal should be reviewed. This process takes about 60 days. That's good to know, Bill. So what he's saying is, um, obviously, if, there's, um, if there was a PID, a Pennsylvania Insurance Department consumer complaint form that you can file either by paper, which I included in my handouts, or um, you can go to the site. And what Bill's saying is that if you file it 90 days after the policy was effectuated, it's going to be automatically re rejected. So you have to write back saying why this should be reviewed, and that process takes about 60 days. Yeah, that doesn't offer much hope to, to anyone with an instant uh, or an immediate issue, um, but thank you for the information, Bill. Um, Mario says, can you please discuss the pay who day on the hill again quickly? Absolutely, Mario. Um, what we do, and there's probably 200 folks from all over Pennsylvania, we um, meet at the State Museum, have a little bit of a debriefing, and then we're put in groups and have appointment set where we go and meet with our legislators and we discuss certain topics. Um, sometimes the, the actual representative leads the discussion on you know, what's important to him um, or her, and other times we, we certainly you know, give our advice and some of the things that we've been experiencing. The, the goal, obviously, is to let our state legislators know of our pain points, some of the issues that we've experienced, and um, hopefully they'll take that, that back to their leadership um, and hopefully, ultimately, to the insurance department where some of these issues can be resolved um, either through the department or legislatively. So that's the day. Um, it lasts about 8 o'clock until about 3, a long day need to wear comfortable shoes, but it is, it is a day that I think um, is, it makes you feel good that at least you've done your part. Um, so if you're interested, I'll send you the flyer. Um, Bill says, just wanted to let you know about the time frame, and I appreciate that. Um, and Mario, I'll send you the, the times again. And that, that looks like those are all the questions um, for today. I really appreciate everyone joining in. Um, it is Easter weekend, so for those of you that celebrate that holiday, uh, happy Easter. And uh, for those of you that don't, hopefully you'll just have a wonderful weekend uh, with your family. And we'll talk again next Thursday on the 31st and hopefully have some more information to share. Appreciate your time and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.